Now we're going to look at the graph of cosecant. To be able to find the graph of cosecant, what we're going to do is, uh, again, we're going to use the reciprocal concept. So we're actually going to graph sine. Okay, so uh, again, to be able to do this, we need to go ahead and figure out everything we need for sine. So first is the amplitude, absolute value of A. A is the coefficient of the trig function, so we get one half. Your period will be the, ab the 2 pi divided by b. b is the coefficient of the trig function, which in this case will be 1 half. That's a complex fraction, so what we're going to do is multiply by the reciprocal. To find our phase shift, you're going to put 0 on one end and 2 pi on the other. In the middle, you're going to put whatever you're taking the sine or cosine of. So first thing we'll do is we'll add pi thirds. So plus pi thirds to each section. When you do that, over here you're going to get pi thirds. It's less than or equal to x divided by 2, which is less than or equal to, uh, this is going to be thirds, that'd be 6 thirds, add 1 to it, you get 7 pi thirds. And next we're going to multiply by 2. Multiply by 2 times 2 times 2. Here, uh, what you'll get is 2 pi thirds less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 14 pi thirds. All right, just a little friendly reminder, you can always check to make sure if you're right, because the distance from here to here would have to be this right here. Well, if you take this and subtract this, you get 12 pi thirds. If you convert 4 pi into thirds, that's 12 pi thirds. So we should be on the right track. The only thing we need to find now is our divisions. So to do that, we're going to take our period of 4 pi and divide it by 4. When you do that, you get an answer of pi. So as you can see, we have all of our information. Now let's go ahead and see if we can't graph. So we'll start off at 2 pi thirds. The reason we start there is because that's the first value of our phase shift. We're going to try to end here, and the way we're going to get there is by adding this. Well, pi in terms of thirds would be 3 thirds. So when you add 3 thirds to this, you get 5 pi thirds. Add 3 thirds again, and you get 8 pi thirds. Add 3 thirds again, and you get 11 pi thirds. Add 3 thirds again, and you get 14 pi thirds. Now, if for some reason we could simplify any of these than we would if they were integers, or if you could simplify your fraction, you would need to do that stuff. Next, what we're going to do is go back and figure out what we're trying to graph. Uh, as you can see, we want to graph cosecant, but to do that, we're going to have to graph our sine. So since it's negative one half, we're actually going to graph our um, <laughs> our negative sign. Negative sign starts at zero, and then a minimum value. Okay. Well, our minimum value based on our amplitude is going to be one half in this case. Then it goes zero, maximum value of one half based on our amplitude, and then back to zero. So this is the graph. Oh, I missed my point. This is the graph of the sign. Okay, but unfortunately, that's not what we're looking for. So we're going to kind of move on from here and figure out what the cosecant will look like. Now, again, this is only one uh, period of our nice little graph. It would go on forever in both directions. And what you should have learned in the last one is anywhere where you have an x-intercept, which is a y value of 0, when you take the reciprocal of that, you will actually get a vertical asymptote because those values will be undefined. Whenever you take the reciprocal of zero, you'll have an undefined value. Now, from here, what we can do is this value right here, uh, we had taken one, negative one, and, or actually we'd taken a positive one uh, and multiplied it by a to give us negative one half. So we're gonna take that positive one, take the reciprocal of one, and then multiply it by negative one half to be at negative one half. Normally, our trig function right here will be at negative one, but when you multiply that by a half, you get one half. Well, negative one, the reciprocal of negative one is also negative one. When you multiply that, you'll get the same value. So two things to reminder, you don't have to go through the process of finding all of them by hand. You can just remember that uh, your sign, the, the negative sign, goes zero, minimum, zero, maximum, zero. Wherever you have x-intercepts, you will actually end up with uh, vertical asymptotes and that your sine and uh, cosine share the minimum and maximum values with the secant and cosecant. 
Now if you notice all of these right here are negative, these values are negative, so as we approach the vertical asymptote our function will go to negative infinity. Because we are taking the reciprocal, so there's no way you could take the reciprocal of a negative and get a positive number. Here these are all positive, so when you take the reciprocal you will get a positive value. So therefore as we approach the asymptotes we're going to positive infinity. So again, that's the graph. It has the combination of the negative sine and negative cosecant. If for some reason they were asking you just for the uh, cosecant graph, maybe your graph would look a little something like that when you graph it. And again, that pattern repeats itself just like the sine does. There's the graphs of secant and cosecant.